All right, we're continuing First John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live for him? No, that we might live through him or in him. Here in his love, not that we love God. I love, I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I bet you better love your neighbor as yourself. That's what God wants. No, here is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Okay. So John here is talking in objectives, absolutes, objective truths. So loving one another. He's talking about acknowledging another believer. This is for a believer, okay? So you believer, when you acknowledge another believer as a true believer, solely based on their faith in the person and finished work of Christ, you're you're acknowledging them as a son of God, that they're born of God, that they know God. Because how their lifestyle is, because they go to church, because they're doing good things, like a Catholic, like a monk, like a Calvinist? No. But because their faith in the person that Jesus is God and they believe in his death, burial, and resurrection alone for justification, that Christ is a righteousness, period. No ifs, ands, or buts. If that's their testimony, I don't care what they look like. They're a child of God. They're born of God. That's called loving one another in John. This love is of God. Okay, this is not something that you have to try to do. Oh, I got to try my best to love them. No, this is something that's objective. That's true in you because it's true in Christ. And everyone that loveth is born of God. So this is something that's objective. This is the eternal life. If you're a son of God, you're going to acknowledge another son of God. Same thing, I mean, f female too. Um, and you know God, not because you know a little bit about his teachings. I read the Bible 10 times and I came to realize that blah, 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 blah. Well, I go to church. My pastor read to me James 2 and says, faith without works is dead. No, nope, you don't know God. Knowing God in John, again, he writes in absolute, he writes in black and white. He writes in code. If you don't know, understand the book of first John, then you don't understand uh, what he means, and you're going to take these words out of context. Okay. First uh, John 2, 3. Hereby we do know that we know him. How do you know that you know God? Because you keep his commandments. And what is his commandments? Well, he already told us in chapter 3. Not the Ten Commandments, not his... Oh, no, it's, it's talking about Jesus' commandments in the Gospels. Yeah, he said, if you, if you don't love me, you, keep, you don't keep my commandments. You don't keep my commandments, you don't love me. Okay. Again, John and First John use the same language. And what is the commandment that John defines? He doesn't define it in the Gospel of John. He defines it in uh, First John because this is the doctrinal portion. When he uses specific language, he uses it for a reason. The commandment is not love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. So stop putting that, uh, you legalist, stop putting that demand on a believer. You don't know the commandment. You don't know God. You don't love God because you, you, you're not you don't believe in him and his finished work you think that he still demands some sort of law over you and you place that law on another person you're preaching a false gospel no this is the commandment this is the new commandment for the believer it's objective in you you don't have to try to do this this is already true in you you're it's the eternal life this is his command at first john three twenty three, that we should believe in the name of his son and his son jesus christ believe the gospel and love one another as he gave us commandment. He that keepeth us the commandment dwelleth in him, and he in him. Hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he has given us. This is his eternal life. Okay, believing the gospel and an object someone else who also believes the gospel. First John 2. Um, this commandment is I write to you, which is true in him because it's true in you. Because because this is true in Christ, 
and you believe in him and his finished work, you dwell in Christ and he dwells in you. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Most Christians don't understand that. They think that, well, Christ, well yeah, yeah, well, we're told that Christ is seated in the right hand of the Father and he's going to come back. So I want to get closer to God. I want to get closer to Jesus every day. Sometimes I feel far apart if I don't obey his Ten Commandments. No, you don't know anything about the Bible. Stop teaching that, you false teacher. Yes, he's also transcendent, though. Yeah, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, but he also is the Spirit of Christ dwelling in us. The Spirit of Christ dwells in us. Christ in me, the hope of glory. This is a mystery that only a believer can understand. But when a believer's mind is set on the flesh, set on carnal teachings and ordinances and law, okay, you're you're blinded. And But once you exercise faith in the gospel as a believer, you need to preach the gospel to yourself. Look what the word says. Christ dwells in you also. The hope of glory. This hope does not disappoint. The love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so you're in Christ. You're one with him. You can't be far apart from him anymore. We have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't listen to the false teachers anymore. And obey the gospel. Believe it. The darkness has passed and the true light now shines again. This is black and white. So now we understand what the context is because we have to keep teaching it over and over again because you can get one verse. Okay, I understand this verse now. It's clicking. But then when you hit, hit a verse like this, the false teacher or the, the, the enemy or your own mind says, oh, oh, no, maybe maybe he's not talking about that. Maybe blah, 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 blah. Maybe I'm not loving my person enough because I'm not, you know, I'm not giving to the pastor enough or I'm not giving to the homeless enough. I'm not loving one another. No, this is talking about the be believer to believer. And this is objective, not something that you have to try to do. This love is of God. This is agape love. It's God's love towards us. And everyone that loveth is born of God. This is objective. If you believe the gospel, you're born of God. Okay? And you know God. The Father sent His Son... And the Son reveals the Father. No one has seen the Father any time, but only his, only, his only Son. And His Son has revealed Him. Jesus is God. Okay? We know the love of the Father has given unto us. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, verse 3, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world doesn't know us because it doesn't know Christ. The, the religious world doesn't know you, believer. It doesn't know Christ. It doesn't know Him. It's not born of Him. It's just a religious. It's a false form of Christ. In the name of Christ, which is scary. Um, verse eight: He that loveth knoweth not. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So, okay, so in the religious world, there's people. They attend many of these religious churches. Um, they're on YouTube. They're on. They write different Christian books, quote unquote Christian books, spiritual books. Um, and they don't understand. The book of John, okay, they don't they don't believe the gospel as well. Um, they will talk about Jesus, which is scary. They'll they'll talk about um, his teachings and his morals and his ethics and and they'll say, yeah, this is why you know you're alive so that you can be ethical, and moral like Jesus. Sounds good, right? It's like yeah, of course we want to, but that's their gospel. And so when you say, well, that's not what Jesus Jesus came to save sinners. Like Paul says, I'm, I'm the chief of sinners. Jesus came to save me and reconcile me to God. And he is God. And we believe in his finished work. Yeah, he has teachings. But all of his teachings in Matthew, Mark, um, and Luke, well, they were under the ninth commandment. Most of them are under the ninth commandment, which is thou shalt not covet to bring uh, uh, the religious crowd, <laughs> the Jews, and everyone to crisis to see that they're in need for a savior. You can't enter into the kingdom of God. You have to pluck out your right eye because you're constantly lusting. <laughs> Lust is in the heart. It doesn't matter if you haven't actually physically committed adultery with your wife. You're not a virtuous person, dude. You lust all the time. It's about the heart. And no, God's not going to give you a new heart. The problem is that you need, you need to see your, that the law is condemning you. You can't follow it. You can't love God with all your heart and mind and strength. You can't love your neighbor as yourself. It's impossible. Only Jesus does that. And you have to be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Okay? And then they, they will teach all these parables. 
um, as the Christian life, and they'll scare you thinking that you may not actually be saved if you know, because you know you might be an unfaithful steward. You're not because you, you're not doing enough. Okay, they don't know God. They don't know God. And so when they see verses like this in First John, they'll say, "See if you don't actually, if you're not loving, if you're not being loving to people, um, then you actually don't know God." That's the sign. That's the true sign. If you're really saved. If you really love any people, okay, that they don't they don't even know what this means. They don't know God. God is love, and his love is manifested towards us. See, the false teachers will always put the demand back on you to try to love God and love others. It's back to the Ten Commandments. That's the law. Paul says, I through the law am dead to the law, that my, that I might live unto God. Unto God. I'm crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. Christ lives in me, and the life that I live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God if righteousness came by the law, talking about the Christian life, then Christ, is you're saying that Christ died in vain. Oh, foolish Galatians. Yeah, the Christian believers, the believers in Galatia, were for the Christian life, were going back to the law. And the law is, thou shalt love God with all your heart, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. The law is the Ten Commandments. The law is uh, the Levitical priesthood too. The law is um, if you tithe, then God will bless you. You know, if you don't worship God with your finances, then God's going to take away your finances. The law is um, if you do this, you're going to store many, 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 many rewards and treasures in heaven. Now, if you do in this mission trip, you part of this ministry. That is the law. The law is. Also, if you have anger in your heart, if you have anger towards a brother, you murdered in your heart too, okay? The law is you better be perfect because your heavenly father is perfect. That's the law too, okay? If you do this, God will bless you. If you don't, then you may not have all the blessings that God wants to give you. That's the law. You don't know God. You don't love God. No, Okay? The love of God is God's love towards us. This is agape love. Peter thought he loved God. Jesus was like, hey, Peter, do you love me? Agape me? And Peter's like, Lord, I do love you. But the word he used in Greek was phileo. It's like a love that like a friend loves another friend. Like just a normal human being friend. Not loving God, but it's just like loving a dog. That's the love that Peter had. Okay, Lord asked him three times. Many Christians think that they, or unbelievers who are in a religious institutional church, think that they love God. And their love is defined by what they do for God and what they don't do bad things for God. That's See, that's how I prove God that I love him, through all my efforts and works. I read the Bible every day. I pray every day. Go to church every day. Talk to my priest, pastor, every day. I serve every day. I'm a servant. Okay. <laughs> you don't understand the love of God. It's possible for a believer to to be under false teaching. They don't understand that the love of God is different, that it's an objective truth, that the, the Son is loving the Father in us and through us, and we love Him because He first loved us. So it's objective love. And we can grow in this love, how? By growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You're resting in Him. You're seeing your death with Christ. You're seeing that you've raised together with Him. You, you, you're seeing your death to the law. You're seeing your death to the religious world, and you're seeing that the world's dead to you, and you're walking by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Okay, this is all growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All you're doing is agreeing with the word more and more, and you're resting in his finished work. If anything, you're believing the gospel, and you're, you're more clear on the gospel now, and so you can acknowledge when another person... Um, is not clear and if they don't believe because of what they're testifying of what they believe they don't believe in the person and finished work of christ okay you're growing in the grace and knowledge over your lord and savior jesus Christ. and this is something that the lord does in you christ does in us as our high priest as our good shepherd and he takes us through experiences in life to show us that this is love not that we love god but that he loved us that his, that god sent his only son into the world that we would live through him that word live uh, is the life of Christ in us. And then the through 
is in us or with us during an account of Christ. It's not doing something for God. I'm trying to live for God, lead my life down for God, commit my life to God. No. He, we live through Christ, with him and in him. That's what it is. This is by faith. The just shall live by faith. Here in his love, verse 10, verse 4. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. This is our testimony. This is just something that the believer testifies. And then when the religious person comes and adds all these other religious things to the believer, they are confused on what the Christian life is. The Christian life is Christ. Christ in me, the hope of glory. The fault, the religious teacher, the spiritual leader <laughs> will say, no, yeah, Christ died for you, but now you not need to live for him. They're not going to tell you Christ died for your sins, according to the scriptures, buried and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. And by believing in him, you're justified by faith. This means you have eternal life. Not only that, but Christ lives in you. Christ is your inheritance. Christ is your reward. Christ is your righteousness. We walk by faith. Okay, we died to the law. We died to the world. Sin doesn't have to lord it over you anymore. You exercise faith in the blood. Christ is your satisfaction. You can rest in him freely. There's no demand on you. There's no law on you. No. Christ is our life. He is our food and drink. They're not going to tell you that. They're going to say, since Christ died for you, you got to die for him. And you prove to God that you really love him by going to church, by reading the Bible, by you know praying 10 times a day. How's your prayer life going today? How much are you reading today? Are you reading James? <laughs> are you reading Deuteronomy? <laughs> um, let's, let's go through the book of Ezekiel together. And then they'll place... They'll find all these different applications in Ezekiel that apply to Israel, um, all these judgments that were prophesied towards the nation, and they'll scare you with them. They don't know what they don't know who God is. They don't know the gospel. They don't know how to walk by faith. Okay. Okay. So this is our testimony. It's focused on Christ, His life in us and through us. So th this is love, not that we love God, but he loved us and gave himself for us. It's God's love towards us. Uh, verse 11, beloved, if God so loved us, we all, we all also to love one another in this same way. Is this based on their virtues? Is this based on, you know, how they look, what they're doing or what they're not doing? No, this is based on the testimony of God concerning the son, his son. What are they testifying of what they believe? Okay, you cannot, a false teacher is going to say, no, if you don't look like me, if you don't look like us in, in these clothes, wearing, you know, smiling like this, going to our church or going to some church, you have to at least go to a church. If you're not serving, then you're proving that you really don't, you know, you're not really changed. You don't have a changed life, they'll say. You don't have a changed life. You don't have a changed life. You're not baptized. You're not doing this, Y, and Z. You're not looking more and more like a monk, a monkey in a cage, you know, or... You know, are you still out in the world? They say that. You're not going to church? Oh, then you're worldly. You're disobeying God. That's not the testimony. No. They're, they're looking for some external manifestation of a religious, spiritual, sanctimonious uh, life. It's not Christ. They're not trying to see Christ in you. And if, and they're, and if someone says, no, I, I believe the gospel, and then whatever their reason is that they're not doing what you want them to do, they're not going to try to fellowship with you in the gospel. No, they're going to try to say and twist their words and manipulate virtue signal to try to get you to do religious things. They don't care about you. They don't care about your, your um, enjoyment of Christ. They don't know how to join Christ. They don't know God. They will twist words to, to make you just be religious like them. But a, a true believer will, regardless of what you're doing or not doing, if in that conversation, you, you, that person confirms their testimony is that they do believe the gospel. They believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that Jesus is God, that Jesus is the righteousness. Yeah, I believe the gospel. It's, I, I don't really know anything else, really. I believe, all I only know is I believe the gospel. I don't go to church that much. I don't read the Bible that much. I believe the gospel because they're always in condemnation when a religious person approaches them. The first thing is said, oh, yeah, I mean, I don't go to church anymore. Oh, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I don't really read the Bible that much. I really, probably should. They're always in condemnation because the religious people are condemners. See, the true believer is going to be like, you know, you're my brother in Christ. You're my sister in Christ. And you can give them Christ. 
you can refresh them with what they have in Christ, how to exercise uh, faith in the blood, believe in the gospel, what the word says, not what their feelings say, and that Christ really loves them and gave himself for them, that Christ is their life, and that they've died to the law. They can enjoy Christ. So when they read, read the word, or just whatever, just talk to the Lord. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be anything religious or some sort of spiritual duty. That's a made-up religious word, word. They can enjoy Christ, okay? They can enjoy Christ. They can understand what fellowship is because our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. And the Lord is their shepherd. They shall not want. The Lord will take care of them. That's loving one another. You're pointing them to Christ and what they have in Christ. Um, verse 12, No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us, and his love is perfected in us. The, the Lord wants to perfect his love in us. Okay, it's easy to waver and think, Oh, I'm so far from God. I'm not doing enough. No, Christ dwells in us, okay? No one has seen God at any time, but he has given us his son and his son has revealed the father to us. Uh, do you, I hear God speaking to me every single day and the Bible is telling me that I need to keep the Ten Commandments. That's what they'll say. No, the, the Hebrew says that the uh, that God has spoken in various times and past and he's, in these last days he's spoken to us in son, in his son. Hear him. He, the son is speaking in us. Abba, Father. That is our position in Christ. That is our relationship to God. We are sons of God, children of God, heirs of Christ, joint heirs with Christ, heirs of God. And when we're growing in these truths of what we have in the New Testament ministry, James was written, the book of James was written before the epistle, before the epistles. It doesn't have the New Testament ministry of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Uh, there are little aspects of that book where you can see grace and you can enjoy Christ. Um, as far as like God is um, the father of lights where there is no shadow of turning. And if you need wisdom, ask the Lord. He gives it freely. But then we come to the New Testament ministry where it says um, the riches, the, the riches of the knowledge and, and wisdom are found in Christ. Look to Christ. Uh, James, before the New Testament ministry was given, James wrote this letter to the early church when they didn't know how to live the Christian life. James is like, hey, look, if you look into the, the law, because all they had was the law still, and whatever Jesus taught uh, in his earthly ministry in the law, John wasn't written then. Um, but uh, whatever they knew in the, the Old Testament, the Torah, okay, when James is like, okay, look into the law. Be a, try to be a doer of the law, and you'll be blessed. But he, then he says, well, you can't be, a, you can't, you're just a hearer, you're a forgetful hearer. You're tossed too. You're, you, you're, you're a forgetful hearer only, not a doer. Okay. No one's a doer of the law. Everyone's just a hearer. You can't do it. <laughs> um, yeah, you can't control your tongue. It, it's a flame of fire. But then when we get to New Testament ministry, Paul gives the mirror to the church. And says, look, we're not supposed to be looking at the, the law to try to do it. No, you're trying to, you, that's, you, that's already dead. You're dead, to, you're dead. You died to the law. You can't do it. So when we look to the, the word, the law, uh, not the law, but the, not the letter that kills, but the spirit that gives life. We look to the word who is Christ. And the spirit always testifies of who? You? What you're doing? No, the spirit testifies of Christ and glorifies Christ. And we behold Christ in the word. We see him and what <clears throat> he's done for us and we'll be having him. And uh, we're, we're being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. We're beholding Christ and his smile on his face towards us. That we're accepted in him. We're complete in Christ. And one day we're going to be uh, glorified together with him. We see that in the New Testament ministry, not in the book of James. Okay, you have to read the book of James and when it was written in time, what he knew, okay? Because just like reading, I don't know, Genesis or Gospel of Mark, Matthew or Leviticus, okay? You have to read it in its context. And when it was written, what they knew at the time, what the purpose of the book is in the context. Um, that's called the Bible. It's the whole counsel of God. All scripture is profitable for doctrine, 
But not all scripture is doctrine itself. Doctrine came through the epistles after Christ ascended and gave revelation to Paul for the church. Okay. That's when we see the doctrine of Christ. And that's what John has. So he wants his love to be perfected in us. God wants his love to be perfected in us. Keep yourselves in the love of God, Jude says. That's not you trying to love God more. No, it's to rest in what you have in Christ and God's love towards you. And hereby we know that we dwell in Christ and he in us because he's given us his spirit. The spirit is the spirit of Christ, dwells in us, cries out Abba Father, and, and he testifies of the Son, the spirit in us. He's not going to testify of you and what you're doing or what you're not doing. No. Verse 14, and we have seen and do testify, the see the testify, testimony, that the Father set the Son to be the Savior of the world. That's what the Spirit is testifying of. Uh, we hear God's voice. We hear our Father's voice. He speaks in His Son. Whoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God and God dwelleth in Him, and He in God. This is the, again, this is our testimony. This is the what Abel testified of. Um, Cain hated Abel. Cain's brother, or Abel's brother Cain, who testified of himself and his works and his fruit in the name of God, said he boasted in his love for God. I know God, but hates his brother. The hating the brother is like, rejecting them as a true child of God. Um, they don't think that the blood is enough. They, the the believer doesn't do that. Abel, no. Um, we dwell in Christ. And we have known them. We believe that the love of God has to us. God is love, and he that dwells in love, dwells in God, and God in him. This is objective. Not, you, have to, you don't have to try to do this. You dwell in Christ. Herein is our love made perfect. How do you? How? That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. So again, the false teachers of troll say, yeah, okay, you're going to heaven. You're not going to have eternal condemnation, but uh, there might be a temporal judgment here on earth. God can take you out early. And they'll use James for that. If you don't do enough, um, you mean you'll be lazy and God's going to take you out early. You'll be an unfaithful steward, or you may not even be saved on that day because you, you were unfaithful. Okay, all that's going to make you um, shrink back in shame as a believer, and you're not going to be perfecting the love of God. Um, but no, but when you're when you're discerning that that's a false teaching, more and more you're, you're exercising faith in Christ and his blood and what you have in him, that he dwells in you and you dwell in him. You're never far apart from God. You're having boldness in that day because there is a day, the judgment is a bima seat and it's a time of reward, okay? So the judgment that that we're going to step into, for uh, it's going to be like a twinkling of an eye. It's the bima seat of reward, where all the fire, there's going to be a fire of transfiguration before, you know, you get a new body. This is at the rapture. You're going to get a new body. Before that, he's going to burn away all the, the fire of transfiguration is going to burn away all the, the dead works that we did in religion. And what's going to remain is what Christ has wrought in us the, uh, through the faith, the blood, the word, um, the comforts that he's wrought in us. And that we were able to comfort others with the same comfort that we received in Christ. Okay, he's not going to forget. And it's not about you, how faithful you are, no, but it's about how faithful he is. And Romans 4.4 4 says that the reward is of grace. If it's not of grace, then it's of debt. Okay, so he wants you to have boldness on that day. <clears throat> and not shrink back in shame. So boldness right now. It could happen any time, the rapture. He wants you to be bold right now towards God through faith in his son, because when the father sees us, the father sees Christ. That's going to make you enjoy Christ. And it's not some better enjoy Christ. No. <laughs> no, I don't have to care what other people think. They could say, I'm looking for a license to sin all they want. They don't know Christ. That's what Paul, they said that about Paul the apostle. I don't care if they say I'm lazy. I don't, you know, you're, you're disobedient. You don't go to church. I don't care what they say. I, I care what the father says. And he speaks in his son. Okay. We look at Christ. We have, I have boldness. Before the Lord, through faith in his blood, period. His grace and grace alone. As he is, so we are in this world. Just as Christ is, we are in this world. And we do know that um, the world hated Christ. Not the, not the tax collector. Not the worldly world. Not the, you know, the prostitute who is justified by faith. He was washing his feet. No, who hated Christ? And who hated that justified prostitute? The Pharisees. The religious people who said, I love God with all my heart, soul, and strength. I go to Sabbath. I keep the Sabbath. I keep it holy. <laughs> Every Sunday. <laughs> Every, or it's Saturday for them. Um, I fast. Are you fasting? You know, all these things I do because I have a changed life. The old Pharisees will say. 
Nope. They're the ones that hate Christ. They reject him. And they hate the believer who's also the justified by faith. We're in this world, okay? Um, there's no fear in this love, but perfect love casts off fear because fear involves torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in his love. Okay, if, you, if you're if you listening to a different voice that's making you afraid of God in your Christian life, then that's not the, the, the love of God. When you're growing in the grace knowledge of God, you're realizing more and more that this his perfect love is casting out all that fear. Um, and the religious leaders and teachers in modern day Christianity will teach um, with a little, <clears throat> with like 80% grace and then 20% fear. Just to get just enough to get you, you know, to scare you enough to not do certain things and to keep going to church, keep tithing, keep serving here. We, we can't lose members. You know, what are you doing? Are you being a kingdom? Are you being kingdom minded? Are you, know, are you bringing other people to church? How often are you talking about Jesus? People don't want to hear about your Jesus. It's a false Christ. And you're just afraid that you're going to lose your job and your 401k, false teacher. You don't give a, a rat's, a rat's poop <clears throat> about the child of God. You care about your position of, of authority and you love it. You want to flaunt it around and have everyone call you pastor. Yeah. Yeah. That's And you, when you teach, you're teaching... If you're not faithful enough, then God's not going to say, well, don't get a faithful servant. But that's what we want to hear. That's what we want to strive for. So let's just keep striving for it. I want to hear on that day, faithful servant. Yeah. So I better, you better try hard, guys. Keep being a kingdom minded. You know, you don't want to hear just, you know, I'm just saying, you don't want to hear on that day. Depart from me. You know, and they're going to, oh, well, you see, you can say, Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. But Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. See? It's not about what you believe. It's about what you do. Ja the James says, even the demons believe and tremble. <laughs> See? Faith that works you dead. No. Jesus said many on that day, on the not the ju judgment day that we have. That's the Bema Seat of Reward. But there's a uh, judgment, a uh, great white throne of judgment unto condemnation. All who didn't believe who lived on this earth will go on that judgment, okay? And they're going to say on that day, Lord, Lord. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows, um, is going to know. Everyone's going to bow their knee and, and say that Jesus is Lord, okay? As Roman says. Better do that here. <laughs> but I'll, if you reject Christ, <clears throat> no excuse. And it's finished work. You don't believe the gospel. On that day, you're going to say, Lord, Lord. There's many are going to be on that, on that day who are religious, in many institutional churches all around, different religions are going to say, Lord, Lord, but I did many mighty works in your name. Cast out demons. Some cast out demons in their name. Yeah, Pentecostal churches do that. In the name of Christ. Okay? They said they worship God. Um, but on that judgment day for the non-believer, because <laughs> they rejected the gospel. They thought it, they, were, they were doing things in the name of God. Cast out demons, doing great mighty works in his name. That was, that's what Cain did too. Uh, many mighty works. Produced the fruit of the ground. Look, this is what you want, Lord. I'm casting out demons in your name. This is what people are doing here these days. You know, they're doing all these works. Thinking that they have a changed life. But actually, sometimes when they, they, they just want the fame. There's always some sort of hidden agenda that uh, they can boast about all their mission trips and all this, but they didn't believe the gospel. Some people didn't. Many people aren't going to be, many are, Many people don't believe the gospel who are doing religious things. Um, doesn't mean you're a Christian because you cast out a demon and you say, Lord, okay? And, James, and in the book of James, even the demons believe that God is one, it says. It doesn't say, even the demons believe the gospel. No, they don't. They reject the gospel. Satan hates that God's righteous to justify a sinner. He doesn't think that God's righteous to justify a sinner. No, he thinks that God's unrighteous. How can you justify a dirty sinner like Matthias? Okay, that's what, that's what James, he's not saying the gospel. And just because you say, Lord, Lord, doesn't that's not believing the gospel. Stop using those words to trip, twist the scripture and add works. Okay? James didn't understand that the way that you know a believer is saved 
is their faith in the gospel. In in the early church, they thought it was by your works that that's how I know that you're really saved. Um, James didn't have the New Testament ministry yet. Okay, you have to read it when it was written. They didn't know what we have. We have it good today. And now there are believers. I mean, Moses um, was a believer justified by faith. Uh, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they all were justified by faith apart from works. Um, the nation itself, eventually, of Israel, I mean, Israel didn't even exist back when Adam was there, back when Abel was there, back when Abraham was there. That wasn't a thing yet. But they were still justified by faith apart from works. But, yeah, many on, on the judgment day, uh, unto condemnation for unbelievers. They're going to say, Lord, Lord, I did many things in your name. Jesus said, you didn't do the will of my father. And so depart from me. I never knew you. He never knew them because they didn't believe in, in him. And they didn't do the will of the father. See, you didn't do God's will. You got to do this, X, Y, and Z. You're living, if you're living a bad life, then you're not doing the will of God. Because First Thessalonians said, this is the will of God, uh, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that you may possess your vessel in honor. This is for a believer and possessing your vessel in honor. What is a vessel? We have this treasure in our hidden vessels, Christ in me. We're realizing that Christ is my satisfaction. So you're either fornicating or you're not, okay? It's not like you're progressively trying to be more, you know, sanctified. No, that's a false teaching. And the will of the Father in the Gospel of John is uh, that we believe in his Son. That's God's will. He wants you to believe in his Son. You didn't do that. You did everything else and you said, Lord, Lord. Okay? Even the demons know that God is one. Of course. They were fallen angels. Okay? Okay? But for, for a person, a human being, and pr by the way, angels don't get saved. <clears throat> they can't get saved. God didn't come to save angels. He came to save sinners, humans. Um, if you don't believe the gospel, then you, you will not have eternal life. You will not be in heaven. <laughs> You're going to go to hell forever. That's your choice. You didn't believe. And God gives everyone a chance. He does not predestine people to go to hell non-believers no justification is through faith alone in this person and finished work and once you're in christ when you believe the gospel the church you you are in christ you're in his body you're the bride you're the church that you are predestined uh, you'll be glorified you'll be transfigured that's what we're predestined for he's in turn he work all things together for good um we will be holy on that day like we're going to see ourselves as christ we're he, we're holy now but we still live in this earthly flesh and we still sin but on god's account he doesn't um hold sin against us no it's covered by the blood okay so we want to grow in these truths um so when you're not when your eyes are on your flesh you, the fear is coming back and you're not made perfect in his love because you're not you're listening to all these other false teachers that i've mentioned who teach the word wrong and they want you to, um, you know, question, is it really faithful in a Christ alone? Is the Christian life really justified to live by faith? They're going to have you question that. Look, we do love him because he first loved us. And this is, I mean, this could keep, continue to go on. I know it's a long message. Um, but yeah, if a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? See, the hating the brother is rejecting them. Because you're looking at their that that you're, you false believer, you're rejecting a true believer because you're looking at their outward appearance. You can't even see God. You don't even know God. Don't, don't say that he's not saved. That believer, that believer just said he uh, Christ is his righteousness, that he's justified by faith apart from works. And you're saying no, faith without works is dead. You're hating him. You're a liar. And the devil's the father of all lies. Do you see that? You don't even know God. Don't try to say that this person is not saved. And when he just told you that he testified of that he believed in the gospel. That's the commandment. That you, you acknowledge that believer as this true believer. And the non-believer can't do that. Only a true believer does this. This is what John is saying. There's issues that are going on in the fellowship. There's false people have crept in. And this is the same thing today. And this is the same thing today. 
It just it's modernized. And this is the commandment we have had from him that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. See, if you love God with all your gospel mind, and you're gonna love any better yourself, that's a don't no. Again, we already talked about the commandment is to believe, believe in his son, Jesus Christ, and then love one another. And the loving God is already obviously true because we love him because he first loved us and gave himself for us. Do you see how easy it is to actually interpret the word instead of just taking one verse and getting all afraid because of the, the commentator that you're listening to when you read the Bible? Yeah, you don't know. They don't know. Okay, when, when, you, when, you, believe in the, when you believe the gospel, you know that Christ is your propitiation and just to live by faith that you you're justified you're walking by faith you, you know that you love god because he loved you and you will also love your brother too it's in that same way you can't cut the ground out of your own feet um you, you're gonna acknowledge them you're gonna see them um through the blood of christ if, if they believe the gospel that's true automatically true in every believer